Oh, there we go. All right, I call to order the meeting for the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of East Hampton. Today is Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020. With a couple of administrative items to take care of prior to the public <coughs> hearing. First of all is the approval of the minutes from our November 20th, 2019 meeting as there was no meeting in December. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All right. I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Correspondences and requests for comment from other boards, committees, and officials. Anything? No. Nothing. Okay. Is there anyone here who's interested in a, speaking to the to the board concerning anything that is not currently on the docket for this evening? Okay. And um, <laughs> There's only one thing on the docket. <laughs> okay. Um, and our, do we want to discuss our meeting times after the public hearing? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to hold that. Okay. We good to start this? All right. Our first hearing and only hearing this evening is William Lee Guru seeking a special permit to create an accessory apartment in an existing detached structure on a single family residential lot in accordance with sections 8.5, 12.7 at East Hampton Zoning Ordinance. Subject property is located at 36 Holly Circle and zone residential rural B R40. Anyone here to speak on that behalf? That would be you. I'm one of the neighbors. So my name is Laurie Garcia. Hold on, hold okay. on. Is Mr. Giroux? Giroux. That's me. I'm sorry, sir. It's all right. I didn't want. I. I. It's a. It's a tough one. Well, I, I, you'd be surprised how many names we come here to come across this test. Okay. So should he speak first? Yes, he needs to. Yes. He needs to explain your. Please explain your request, sir. Well, um, I basically exactly what you just said. I mean, I'm looking there. There was an existing building on the property. Yep. Um, my boss, Paul uh, Winkle, um, bought it a year ago in November, and uh, we want to finish off the apartment. And uh, I'm keeping. I'm hoping that my mom might want to move up from Cape Cod, so that's one of the reasons we want to finish it off. Okay. So, um, and I guess that's it. All right. It's an existing structure. It is ex yeah, exactly. It's existing. Um, it was roughed in actually. Okay. Which is kind of interesting. It was, I guess, the previous owner had. Uh, I think they were going to make it into an apartment because it had all the plumbing for a bathroom. Um, it was all ready to go. They just, I guess, they just never pulled the plug on it. So, so we're looking to do that. Okay. All right. Okay, is there anyone else? Uh, you're, you're the only person here representing yourself and everything well, like that? Just making uh, Paul, sure. Paul Winkle was here, but we had an emergency at the house. Uh, we, the plumber was there working today and he shut off the water and didn't turn it on. So we had to have the plumber get back to the house and my dogs wouldn't let the plumber in. So Paul had to take off and go. So I'm here for. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And so is there anyone else who's looking to speak in reference to this application? And you put your hand up first, so if you could state your name so we know who you are. I'm Laurie Garcia, and I live at 30 Holly Circle. Yeah. And I would like to first state that we have nothing against our new neighbors. And we, we are not here as neighbors to cause problems. But when that building went up years ago, it was of utmost concern to us. That house is by far the largest property on the street. And all of a sudden we saw this building going up in the back. And we weren't quite sure what was going on. And at that time I called Stuart Beckley, who was the city planner, and I said, the Gauls are putting something up back there. And he sent someone over. They, we have um, tree, a tree line right behind our properties that belonged to the Piscomet Trust. And at that point, Stewart had said that there had been some trading with the city of East Hampton and with Bernie Gall in relation to that particular strand and farmland in the back of us. And this all relates to that because when they put up that structure, all of a sudden the roof went on and it was extremely tall. And we realized that they built it as a garage 
to house one of their um, large construction vehicles. It was so tall, they needed it that height. And it was in there, and then at times, Matt Gall would pull out, they actually cut down trees so he could go out the back of that property. And I took a picture of it today because you can still notice where the trees were cut down so he could go out of that garage and then go to the other streets, you know, Baybury, Kingsbury, all of that. So we were appalled that that structure went up to house a vehicle for their company and it destroyed our views of the mountain. And we also couldn't understand why there was an apartment being roughed in up there with a house that size. Now we're concerned because if it is finished and if it is allowed to have inhabitants, it's right now being planned a mother-in-law apartment, but what's to say that in the future it's not going to be for a rental unit? What's to stop other neighborhoods from putting in tiny homes, which are now possible to put in the back of houses, to start Airbnbs or other types of rental properties? Our street is not zoned for that for a reason, and we'd like to keep it the way we have it. Okay. Is there anyone else interested in speaking? Yeah, I'll speak. Um, uh, my name is Kirby Detmers. I'm at 34 Holly Circle, right next door. And um, I think there was a concern when this garage was being put up in the first place. Matt Gall lived there. And um, what I was informed of is that that was going to be his office. That was going to be his office while he was working and developing the property behind us. Um, obviously, that never happened. Um, so that you know, that was one of the concerns. I think what kind of how I feel about it is when we bought our property, we were given. Uh, Declaration of restric Restrictive Covenants, and it has to do with the, um, which I have here, it has to do with, um, what is it, Pheasant, Pheasant Run Estates. And in this Declaration of restric Restrictive Covenants that I had to sign, that we had to sign, it mentions that no building other than private dwellings arranged for the occupancy of not more than one family or, and consisting of not less than 1,800, you know, it gives an expl explanation as to our, our lots were strictly for single family dwellings. And I had to sign this. Um, I'm yeah. just surprised that, um, that it was put up in the first place. I guess it was supposed to be for an office, but now it seems to maybe be more than that. So I, I'm, is there anyone else looking to speak? Sir? If we have a CFO from Ferry or the Circle. I have a question. You said that this, um, what kind of building is right now there? A garage or an apartment? That's what I don't Currently, know. Currently, it, it is a garage with an unfinished second floor. So, so basically, it's the, the pictures that were presented to us were show a, a plywood, you know, basically it's, it's plywood and, and studs. Yeah. But, yeah, there's upstairs, upstairs. Upstairs. but in its own right as a garage, wasn't it strange to allow another garage to be put on a property? With I, a three I can't. Yeah, you know, I don't know when it was built. I Nin don't know. 1998, I think. Yeah. Okay. So and that, I mean that. Pre, no, no, it pre was in No, it was after that. Okay. okay. Well, I just pulled it. 2008. 2008, maybe. Okay. Yeah. We bought the house in 2001. Yeah. The house wasn't there. Okay. When did we buy our house? 2005. 2005. So it's like 2007, 2008. Are there zoning limits now with how many garages can be on a property? You are limited by the number of accessory buildings on a property. Yes. So is someone able to have a three-car garage and then another garage that's able to as house? As long as the three-car garage is attached to the structure, it is not considered an accessory. It is only considered an accessory if it is a separate building. What does the building permit for the garage say it was? It was. I mean, I'm certain the city issued a building permit for it. Mm -hmm. Because we allow accessory apartments on all residential properties, and I don't believe the city can enforce deed restrictions. 
even when the, we have the, a that's a private deed restriction and I don't believe the city can enforce that we can enforce zoning we can't enforce private restrictions is there uh, what what are they planning can to do or is it Mike Whittemore 35 Holly Circle have we seen what they're planning to do yeah, we, they they applied, and yeah. would you like to see the the application? I mean, is that information out on the city's website? Yes, I view? saw. It. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't find it. Yeah, it was right there. In government building, there. Yeah. 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 And we approved an accessory apartment a couple months ago. Um, on Mayor. Meyer, Meyer Street, yeah, Meyer Street. And I think the discussion at that point was um, that East Hampton permits accessory apartments. Accessory apartments are affordable housing. Right. Um, and we want affordable housing. And if the owner lives on the property, <coughs> and I'm assuming that Mr. Winkle lives on the property, Accessory apartments are not restricted to family members. They can legally be rented out because as long as the owner lives there. If Mr. Winkle rented out his house, he could not have a rented out accessory apartment. So then, my name is Karen Detmers, D-E-T-M-E-R-S. Um, so then I so then what's the special permit for if the, if the it is it is simply to make sure that it meets the uh, standards for an accessory apartment which is you know section 5 8.53 and basically making sure that the apartment is a separate function that only one apartment can be created there there's a list of, of multiple items it's basically to keep people in check that's all it is. And it doesn't allow the building inspector or commissioner to make that decision scot-free. And you're saying that accessory apartments are permittable? Yes. With, so a, as the with a special permit. Yeah. And a special permit is something that's permitted in a particular zone. It, it's, it becomes a special permit because it's not appropriate on every single lot in a, in a particular zone. But it's really difficult to def def deny a special permit mm -hmm. that complies with all the special permit criteria. Well, it's Mike again. So what are your grounds for approving? Well, we, we have to go through and, and to so, so, so we can go through, I'll go through the list, okay? Because we have to go through the list anyway, so we can we can do it. Uh, the apartment will be a complete separate housekeeping unit that functions as a separate unit from the original unit. So this is a separate building, separate from the first one. Only one apartment will be created on a single lot. So this is only one and only one is allowed. <coughs> a lot, the lot in which the single family house is located must meet the minimum lot size requirements and comply with other applicable zoning requirements for that district. So it, then at that point you have the house, it, the, the home, the main home and the accessory must meet all of the side yard setbacks, requirements, and things along those lines for the district. The owner of the residence in which the accessory apartment is located shall occupy at least one of the dwelling units on the premises. So if wanted, a homeowner could build an accessory apartment, live in the accessory apartment, and lease out their home. That is an option. The accessory apartment shall be designed so that the appearance of the building remains that of a one-family residence as much as feasibly possible. In general, any new entrances shall be located on the side or rear of the building. Any exterior changes must conform with the single-family character of the neighborhood. Oh, this is a pre-existing structure, so we, you know, and the entrance, there's a new entrance being created on the west side of the building, if my orientation is correct. It's going to be on the on the left, right side of the garage. That's I don't know, north, south, east, west. So that's the know. second egress from down from upstairs. Yes, it's going to be outside the building. Correct. And does that have to be so far away from the border? 
Does the egress have to be within so many feet? Um, the building does. No. The building does. That's well. That's technically that's an interesting question because that does bring up the side yard setback. If it's a porch and stairs that this is shown. It's a stoop, yeah, and stairs. Stoop and stairs. So how does that fall on the side yard setback? Does and I didn't. Is there a plot plan included with this? No, there wasn't. From what I understand, um, from the first builder who actually put together the uh, the plans, we're all set as far as the setbacks go. And with the stairs, it, it, I I can't hold numbers right now. But right. Well, that should be a condition um, to make sure. Section it's a big, it's a big 6.86 yeah. allows projections into uh, the side yard for open terrace or steps or stoops um, under four feet in height up to one half the required yard setback. Well, this is over four, four feet. feet over four feet in height um, are allowed two feet into the setback. Well, I think it's going to have to comply yeah. with the setback. Well, that, that's the what question. Is, what's the zone again? R40. Six point. Oh, sorry. And does being, Laurie Garcia again, does being on an aquifer also restrict another dwelling on a lot? Because we're on an aquifer. The building is already there. Yeah. And it has but municipal water happening. and sewer. Yeah. yeah, but it's more the, the, the effect on the, on the actual aquifer. Yeah. Our, our zoning, it, it, there's a limit to how much square footage a property can be built on. Um, and the, on the aquifer land, but again, this is an existing. The building's already there. Would it be sure that they went to that when they allowed them to build it? That's not. Excuse me, Jamie. What sections are building setbacks in? Uh, section six. Six. Thank you. But it's for an accessory structure. It's the. Six. Um, that the last, the last one, um, one with 25 feet for, because it's an accessory structure. So all the accessory structures are 25 feet from any property line. And the side yard in that zone is 25. So right, no, no, it's the same thing. Yeah, but all, all. Okay. All right. So. Do we have a plot plan that shows the side yard setback? There wasn't one because I went through the application and I couldn't find one. That would be the question concerning that. Can I also add that all of our plot plans were done in a very strange way? <laughs> We've had people come in now, but our neighbor paid to have someone come and it was like, our line went over her driveway. It's that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a standard. It's, unfortunately, that happens more often than you were pulling. So I have a, I have a question. I know you got to look at that. The, the gentleman behind you had a question. Mike Lindemark. Um So, has has this request gone out to like the six or eight different other committees to review and respond? Yes. And no one responded. Do you have any responses from anyone? We got one response from the Conservation Commission, and it was that they did not have, um, it was not within their jurisdiction because it's not within the was jurisdiction. Was that from level. Cassie? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm on a Conservation Commission. So that was the only Thank you for your service. <laughs> the only response that was received. And that was the only response was from conservation. We didn't have responses from any other department from the city. Correct. That's. That's. I mean, it's an existing building, so yeah. that's normal. Yeah. yeah. It is. It would be nice to have departments respond if there are issues with proposals. They, if there are proposals, they, if there are issues, they usually do respond. Mm -hmm. It's agreed. We appreciate that we got that card, and that's why we're here tonight. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. So I have, I guess, another question, Kirby Detmers. Um, if, if um, 
say the owner sells the property. Mm -hmm. What happens then? <coughs> Does all of a sudden this um, apartment, second dwelling, just automatically become a second dwelling for the sec for the new owner, or do they have to go through this hearing again? I don't think. Do they have to get a special permit? They just have to. Here we go. Right. It, they have to reapply, I think. They do. They just have to appear before the board. It's not a full special yeah. permit hearing. So right. they just have to Pretty basically to say that they understand that they have to live in the live on the property. And they can't rent out both properties. They have correct. to at least right. live in one of them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I think they need to reapply. No, they For don't. A transfer. No. Transfer of ownership of a dwelling with an accessory apartment. The temporary special permit of an accessory apartment in owner occupied single family dwelling shall terminate upon the sale of the property of the title data. The new owners must apply to transfer of sale, transfer of special permit for an accessory. They just have to apply to transfer. To transfer it. Right. 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 They don't have to come, it's not a complete, yeah, it's, yeah, it's how the laws are written. We don't make them. We just have to try to decipher them. <coughs> okay, we'll continue with our standards for the accessory apartment. In addition to the original building is permitted, provided that the addition does not increase the floor area of the volume of the original building by more than one third, 33% of the existing total structure. This is not applicable. These dimension criteria shall apply to an accessory apartment constructed in an existing detached dwelling, such as garage, barn, or carriage house, or an accessory apartment constructed as part of a new detached dwelling. So the size of the house, the, the apartment does not come close to the 33% of the home. <clears throat> the accessory apartment shall be clearly a subordinate part of the single family dwelling. It shall be no greater than one third, 33% of the existing total residential space, or 800 square feet, whichever is less. And I believe it's 800. It, it's 800 square feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. At least two off street parking <coughs> spaces per dwelling unit are available for use by the owner, occupant, and tenant. Parking spaces shall be located to the side or the rear of the structure to the extent feasible. Well, this is an existing two-car garage, so in addition to the regular garage. For dwellings to be served on septic system, the owner must obtain a disposal works construction permit from the Board of Health. This is a non-applicable item. Okay. So I guess the big question is what the side yard said, where the, a building sits on the property compared to the side yard setback. Do we know that distance? I was just looking to see. I, I'm getting no reception here. I actually have the plot plan, but I don't know if I have where the building sits on it. I think we actually met, went out and measured okay. from the building to the property line, and I think we were all set. No. I'm not 100% sure. How do, I, how do I go about doing it? What do I? Um, we can, you can look through on the town website there, or city website, there is uh, a link to the GIS, yeah, the state GIS data. That in the, in the, the house position. wasn't on that. No, the house is not there. Uh, no. The property. Okay. And so, so that's, yeah, because I look, the house so is not that, there, so the garage is not there. Yeah. So I think you might need a, does East Hampton require as built after something's built? I don't know if the building department requires for residential construction. No? Then we might need a surveyor to go out, because I'm assuming the property corner pins are there and mm -hmm. provide the board with some right. notice that if you're 25, the, the, with the stairwell, the second means of access, you'll be 25 feet. Is there a reason why some houses appear, a couple of houses don't appear on GIS? Yeah. Can someone like apply to say? I think Jamie knows. There, there is a reason. Um, it's because it hasn't been updated since before those buildings were built. 
Yeah, it's um, been there before my house was built. No, it's no, no, no. The the the, the, the layer file. No, the, the whole house. The, no, layer, no, the layer file that house, house Excuse the, me. For your house is one of the oldest. Yeah. Yeah. Your house was there when we moved in. Yeah. This house was built after. Right. It has to do with when the data was gathered. Okay. Because it's basically they've taken Google Earth and they've layered different files on top of it in a computer. And so as long as they can find it, then supposedly they can coordinate where it is. But if the file isn't updated. It's like 10, 15 years. Ago. I got nothing. <laughs> so that's that's what I, I the only thing that I have is that what I grabbed from the website and it doesn't have the buildings on there. So right. I did we did have a survey done, but I think that was just the lot lines. Well so if the survey know. if he surveyed the property yeah. or if someone surveyed the property for the purchase and sale or for no, for this something. Was, this was afterwards just to kind of get a right accurate they should the in that documentation have all buildings, all structures on the property. Okay, so that's uh, part of a, a detailed survey. Will include all structures so on the property. Th there's a possibility that I didn't, because I think you can get like different surveys. Okay. So I think you can get one that just shows the property lines, and I think that's might be what. Well, I then did. you might have to have the surveyor come out again and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but here, here's what we'll do, um, and I, it, it's very easy for us to swap the stairs to the other side if we have to. Okay. So that wouldn't be. That well, would we, we open up a, a question about where the building, where the structure is located in general on the property. Because it. Oh, it's definitely over 25 feet. I've actually measured it myself. I forgot exactly what it was, but I know it's 25. Might be even be 30 feet from the property line. You could condition it. We can condition it. You could condition, condition it and leave it. I mean, yeah. Before they get their building permit, the building commissioner will make them survey the property to show that the yeah. that they're I mean, that's, that's that's the big thing is that we need to make sure that it, that the structure complies with the side yard setback and rear yard setback for the for the property. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to the um, the building itself, it needs to meet code. Right? Yeah. It needs yeah. To that that is not in our purview. That is the building inspector and the, the licensed construction supervisor who's doing the work. They have to pull the Even if it's existing, pre-existing, they still it have to still meet code. It still has, to meet, still has to meet all current code. Okay. Um, I, I guess, Lee, please don't take it personally. Too late. Which, which, yeah. uh, which, <laughs> too late for that, guys. That's right. Yeah. Which I think really frustrating is this... Um, this pheasant run estates thing that I was required to sign when I bought the house yeah. and I was required to abide by and it seems like this um, all of a sudden I find out that I bought something that I didn't buy yeah. you know that uh, well and I find it interesting that the person who sold you the lot is the person who broke the rule there was trading going on oh no I, I yeah I didn't buy that lot I, I I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying you know. What happened? We were supposed no, to be a circle. Same, the, 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 Holly the Circle. Mm -hmm. You realize. I don't know if you realize this. So it was named Holly Circle because it was supposed to stop. And then there was trading between the Marricks and the Gauls. So that's why they're going to go through. So everything is different from it, the original plans. Yeah. And when you're dealing with the structure that was put up by one of the builders and a builder who's known to break rules around town, that's our frustration, not with our new neighbors. Well, it doesn't feel like that. I mean, it's we, one of the reasons why we bought the property was hopefully to finish that apartment so I could bring my mom up from the Cape. And wow, um, you know, I, we, I did so much, uh, it, even before we bought the property, I was on the phone with Jamie numerous times to find out about this. I had no idea that I was going to get such grief from the neighbors about build, you know, finishing off an existing building. They, do you want us to take it down? Is that what you want? Um, we would love it, actually. <laughs> Careful what you ask for. I mean, it's not going to happen. It's not great. It's just a well, problem. I just, want, I just sure. want to say that I think it's great, Lee, that you want to do this for your mom, and we would all want to do that. I think. The concern is what happens if, if 
circumstances change and from here on out it's no longer for mom and then and then you know what what are the ramifications because the moving? owner has to live yeah. on the property that provides right, a new, lot of checks and balances team. yeah I mean that and that's really a I right I it mean. is your it's actually benefits you that the homeowner has to live on the property mm. yeah. because it does keep you know, they're not going to want somebody living there who isn't going to take care of the place. And who's going to be not someone you want in your neighborhood if that's the case. Okay, so that is the, that's the hope and the way that the regulation was written was that in an effort to provide additional housing in the city but keep it in check, we can provide accessory structures with a special permit so the homeowner understands what the rules and regulations are and what the ramifications are. So that's that's really and and I'm sorry about the the deed restriction that was put in there. I don't know how that works legally and what you know what the tenure of that is. Is it is it in the is it in the deed? Was it registered at the I have no idea. Have to sign it. Declaration of restriction. You'd have to talk to an attorney. But if it's you know, it's on your deed, but is it on their deed? Their, their well their lot is included in the in the deed. But the lot was there before I mean I had to sign this thing before the house was even built. Before their house was built, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't. I, I don't know, know how. Whether, I don't know whether they knew it when they bought it or not. I don't think it's my responsibility to tell them. Is that something that you guys can do additional research on? No, we don't no. do private deed restrictions. No, no. no. <laughs> if it's, we are. This is what we can go by. And I look at that, and everything looks fine to me. I mean. Do I have issues with it? I would, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of new. You know, with an first mom, <laughs> so. With an accessory apartment on the property, in some regards, there are more restrictions because anybody on your street could rent out their whole house yeah. to somebody else. And, then and the town the house, could not do anything. Uh, on this particular buys. property, the owner is required to live there. And yeah. that provides, I would think, some comfort. My I issue is being point downstream. Point. Um, they're up top, I'm down below. Mm -hmm. So all their construction work comes down to my property. I got a retention pond, I got wetlands. Well, that's my concern. Yeah. Well, and I don't see, they're not doing. You're right. Sorry, you're right. The building's already there. The building's there. <laughs> so any work right. comes downstream. Well, yeah. That I, that, that is, like that's something that has, you know, if you have. For his mom, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. He has to say, new owners have to reapply. Yep. Right, that was also mm -hmm. a concern for what happened. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it was changing, they move. It's um, the history. You don't want to hear it again. <laughs> Can you imagine what it's like seeing him right there cutting down the truck? I taped him and I said, I'm going to take this to the city if you continue. And by taping him, he was literally on the vehicle cutting down the trees and he stopped yeah. because I said, I have evidence. I can show you the tape right now. Yeah, I, that's I, the I, disregard, but that's, it's conservation land. I, I understand and I- I was told I, by the conservation land that they were a paper tiger, meaning that they had claws, but they couldn't use them because it was false. And we need uh, goals and I, we need us. I, we have had our fair share of interactions that. with them as well. So, but okay. I want this uh, committee to know I'm on the conservation committee. So put those trees back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all over the whole neighborhood. Are <laughs> <laughs> hey, you the one that flies the drone around that Beth keeps this? Not when the cops came. That, yeah. that was someone else. Yeah, that was oh, my favorite. Yeah. 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 So one of the neighbors yeah. Yeah. flies Let's get out. Okay. Yeah, we'll put a tiny house up. Everybody's got one. Yeah. You'll come back to visit us. <laughs> <laughs> they do require a special permit as well. Yeah, I know. Maybe we'll see. So. Okay, is there anyone else that has anything else before we close the public hearing and discuss this further? Thank you for all you work. I do have a, just a question. I don't think you, I don't know that you can answer it, but I'm just curious. 
um, in any way does this affect the assessment of our houses? <coughs> Something like this goes. I cannot say one way or another how it affects the assessment of your house. I have it no will, idea. It will, it will affect the assessment of their house mm -hmm. because they have sure. more finished space right. and a second unit. But so more value to. Yeah. And you know, any value, any time value goes up in the neighborhood, yeah. it goes up right. everywhere. So, but, didn't the that just that happen, we, but the way the, <laughs> the, the, way, the way the property values you are them assessed, to do it again? Uh, <laughs> the the assessors only reevaluate each each property every three years, um, and they're looking at it at averages. So they're not looking at the specifics of your specific property. They're looking at what the average price went up or down citywide. So it affects it, but it's not going to. But perhaps in a but good way. Yeah, but it's also it's not going to be. Well, not good. <laughs> it, you know, everything that happens in the city affects your property values. It's not just going to be right, your right. neighbors. Yeah. Does it affect anything with gold coming in with the road behind your house? and? Finishing Holly okay. Circle. You don't have the house there. It's not Holly Circle. Now we have to change the name of our street. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not gonna, it's really going to be a circle. I mean, doesn't that come around behind Is that going to be a Okay. All right. At this point, we'll close the public hearing. Um, we're going to still have to discuss and deliberate here. So, uh, if, but you're know, you're free to stay, or you can depart. But we're going to go ahead and, and finish out what we have to do here. Um, I move we close the public hearing. Second. Second. All right. Well, okay. Okay. Uh, special permit criteria for approval. We have to go through section 12.7.9 of uh, special permit granting authority shall not grant a special permit unless it meets all the requirements. Conformance with provisions, ordinances of the City of East Hampton, general laws, state of Massachusetts, all applicable laws, regulations, state and federal. <coughs> Protection of city amenities and budding properties through the minimization of any detrimental or offensive uses or destruction of unique or important. The meeting's still going on, so. Oh, I got the heat. No, they no, still this is, they still we still have stuff we have to do they still need to, to as part of this, but, oh. you know, the, the public portion of this hearing is complete. We can stay and listen to you. Can. You can stay, you can. Thank you again. But we're, we have not made a decision. We are still, we are still in our hearing. Protection of city amenities and abutting properties through the minimization of any detrimental or offensive uses or destruction of unique or important natural, scenic, or historic features on the site. I think all that was done already. Minimization of traffic and safety impacts of the proposed development. It's not a development, so this is not applicable. Adequacy of methods of disposal of sewage. You're going to do, uh, it's all connected to city sewer. And Correct, water. yes. Okay. City water as well. Yeah. Adequate needs of protecting wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, and well areas. That's it's an existing structure. Mitigation of adverse impacts on the city's resources, including the effect on city's water supply or distribution system. That's not applicable. Provision of any off-street loading or unloading of vehicles. That's not applicable. Uh, applicants' efforts to integrate the development into the existing landscape. It's a pre-existing uh, building, not applicable. Minimization of the area over which existing vegetation is to be removed, where tree removal is required. Special no attention. Is that <laughs> well, Trees down. <laughs> We're going to go non-applicable on that one too. Uh, the consistency of the development with respect to setback, area, placement of parking, architectural style, landscaping, and surrounding buildings, development, pre-existing, so non-applicable. Adequacy of the measures to prevent pollution of surface or groundwater to minimize erosion, sedimentation, and to minimize changes in groundwater levels, increasing runoff and potential flooding. It's uh, pre-existing, so not applicable. 
adequacy of the methods to ensure that the use will not constitute a nuisance by reasons of unacceptable level of air or water pollution, excessive noise, or visually vagrant structures or accessories. So your mom can't listen to Ozzy Osbourne, I'm sorry. No, Ozzy, how about the Grateful Dead? Yeah, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, and the one last item we did not cover under 8.53, but we did verbally, was the construction of any accessory apartment must be in conformity with the state building code, which is a fact of life. Okay. Um, does anyone have anything, concerns, questions? No. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Conditions? Um, yeah, conditions are going to be a side yard setback. Okay. Um, we need confirmation. Now, so how is, is there another way to do that besides spending $3,000 for a, a block? I think that if you call the surveyor, okay. he may have that information. Okay. You just need a letter or confirmation okay. that the structure, it falls outside of the 25 foot side yard setback. Okay. If it does fall within that 25 yard setback, then we have to 25 feet or 25 feet. So, the there's a there's a fence on your property. Um, on that there is now on that side, and actually the fence is about six feet in because there is a set of. How did you determine where the fence was going to go? We had a um, survey. We had a plot line put in. Okay. So, so I do have that. So that's how. What I did was I went out and I. I want to say that I forgot now because I did it afterwards. But I think it's thirty feet. Okay. But I can. So, I mean, because it's it's the. If, if you condition it, mm -hmm. it's the building commissioner who enforces it, and if the building commissioner feels confident looking at the fence, saying, yeah, this, yep. this was yeah. good, then yeah. you're good. But if the well, building, like I said, the fence the is there, but it's still right. six right. or seven right. feet but, over. But, okay, but if the building commissioner looks at it and says, this is too close, I'm going to need a plot, I'm going to need a right. surveyor to come out and do that. Mm -hmm. Then and it's and, not. But, it's, but, but, but that's sure. going to be his. That's, his okay. that's, that's be him his. as the as the building commissioner, okay. he then enforces our decision. Yep. So by him being, if, by, if we say we need to confirm side yard setback exceeds 25 feet, that's a side okay. yard beyond the stairway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I think the stairway, the way we have it set up right now, I want to say, because it's got a, obviously a neat code, and I want to say it's like four feet. Okay. You know, yeah. but, but, so, like I said, we could, if there is any issue, we could we could we easily the flip the stairs side. on the yeah. other side because right. there's another place that we could put it. Okay. So, um, but I that the only thing I would I, I would question about that. So so there's stairs inside. So there's a garage. There's two garages. Yep. And there, so one of the garages is going to be for my mom, and and then there's a set of stairs that go inside. So apparently we have to have two sets of stairs. So the only question I would have then doing it on that side is if do we have to have the stairs? That they, can they be on that the same is side? A, that is a building inspector That's, okay. Okay. decision that he has to make. That. Okay. So um, so do I? Just go out and measure myself. So the building commissioner is going to come out. Is that what's going to happen? When he, when he, when you file for the building permit, or, okay. or whoever's doing the construction files for the building permit. Okay. By in our decision, it will say confirm side yard setback exceeds 25 feet. Okay. Okay. Basically saying we are not sure. We need confirmation, and we we've we've seen it could be a problem, and we wanted to confirm. Okay. Do your job. Okay. All right, great. Well, I, uh, it's uh, O'Connell Construction Valley Kitchens. Right. They might even be down here tomorrow to file a permit. Well, they probably can't. Oh, they can't. Probably they can't. Okay. They can't. Because there's a, once our decision is made, there is a 20-day period. We have, we have to write the decision. The okay. decision then is you know, sealed or you know, uh, presented to the to city council. There's a 20-day appeal period, and then it then becomes legal and then okay. you can pull your permit. Okay. Oops. So. Okay. Uh, so side yard setback, concern side yard setback. Um, you can write that how you like. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
So, at this point, would you like me to make a motion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve the, the uh, request by William Giroux seeking a special permit to create an accessory apartment in an existing detached structure on a single family resident lot in accordance with sections 8.5 and 12.7 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance. Zoning, the property, subject property is located at 36 Holly Circle in the city of East Hampton. I'm second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion is made and carried. Okay. Um, so like I just said, there is a, it takes a couple days to get it written up. Okay. Once it's written up, then there's a 20 day appeal period. At that point, then um, the you will be notified and then you'll have to take that to the uh, Hampshire County uh, Registry of Deeds. So then it is recorded with your deed on the property. Okay. Okay, and then you are then free to uh, pull apart. Okay. And I will, once that's, once the decision's written, I will send you copies of the decision and information on what he just said about where it has been filed and all that happy guys. All right, great, thank you very much. Okay, it's not, you're not done yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it appears so. Okay. Put the hammers away. <laughs> oh, so. Well, they're yeah. do, we're doing work inside the house, so there's plenty for them to right. keep doing inside. All right. So. Okay. All right. Uh huh. All right. So at this point, I'll close the public hearing for you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Um. So, we are currently meeting on the fourth Wednesday of each month. Does that still work for everybody? We'll yeah. find yeah. Okay. And our next meeting sure. will be Wednesday, February 26th, 2020, yeah. 6 o'clock. Um, 2020, jeez. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, thank you. Have a great night. All right. Bye, Jamie. So I'll hear from you soon. Yep. Right? Okay. Oh, All right, thank you very much. Do we have Wednesdays last year, or do we, do we go to Thursday? I belong to a men's club. We only meet on the Wednesdays. We've been Wednesdays a month. for a while, I think, haven't we? I thought. I thought it's been at least at least two years now. Yeah, you know, I've been Wednesdays okay. for a while. But I think right. it switched over. Yeah. Around the time that Maggie mm -hmm. okay. stepped in. Yeah. yeah, and the six o'clock works well. Six o'clock's yeah. fine. I like the six. Okay. And the only day that I have a little bit of conflict is, and we only meet once a month. Right. But it's on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. and is it the same things. fourth Wednesday? It is the same fourth Wednesday. Well, it's a Wednesday, no matter what. Two, three, four. Oh, no, it's the second Wednesday. Okay, then so you're then you're okay. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. right. Okay. So I'm sorry. Our, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's easy. All right. So and, okay, and I'm sorry. at this point, the you're submission. You're over 29, so it's acceptable. Yeah, the submission for. for <laughs> I was going to say senior moment. <laughs> The submission submission deadline for with you. <laughs> for the next meeting is Wednesday, February fifth. <coughs> for those that are interested. All right. Any other business? When is the March meeting? March twenty fifth. Twenty sixth. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Sorry. Okay. Now you um, you got my email. I'm not going to be here in February. Correct. Right. Okay. okay. Um, All right. And at this point, does everybody feel confident they will be here for the February twenty sixth meeting, other than Frank? Yes. yes. And at this point, so we still have two more weeks before the the application deadline for the February meeting. Yep. Uh, you don't have anything. Nothing, but nothing's come in yet. Okay. So nothing's come in. No scuttlebutt. Um, there was a little bit about a sign, but um, <laughs> you know, something scuttle different here. for once. Hey, okay, it wasn't chicken. Um, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> uh, chicken. But I right. think, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's gonna come in in time for the February okay. meeting. That might be March. Okay. So, all right. Motion for adjournment. I make a motion. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved.